Hello everybody, this is WK2T and uh, tonight I'm going to show you how to set up Morse Runner and N1 Mic Mic to uh, talk to each other, communicate with each other so that you can actually simulate and practice running a contest pile up using M1 Mic Mic without actually going on the air. And the idea of this is to be good for people that are new at contesting that are kind of self-conscious about operating on the air and not wanting to look, you know, stupid, if you will. Which, of course, I totally don't believe anybody would look stupid trying to learn how to contest, but people get self-conscious. And one of the things we want to be able to do is to give them a way to practice contesting without actually getting on the air, which is the purpose of this exercise. So what I've done is I've installed Morse Runner, Morse Runner version 1.68. You can find out your version by going to the Help About window, and you'll see up here Morse Runner 1.68. And I have the um, very latest version of N1 Mic Mic, which in this case is 12.12.1, .12 which might not really be the very latest, but it works for this purpose. Um, so 12.12.1 .12 and higher will or should work at least. Um, and I have something called Auto Key, um, and Auto Key is a program. Auto Hotkey actually is what it's called. And Auto Hotkey is a program that gives me a script that actually collects the keys from the keyboard and feeds them from the keyboard into uh, between Morse Runner and um, and M1 Mic Mic to actually fool Morse Runner into thinking I'm actually typing directly into it. And it allows me to use the M1 Mic Mic interface to to run Morse Runner, if you will. And that gives me a bunch of advantages. Number one, I'm actually using Morse Runner to to operate the simulation, which allows me to practice using Morse Runner as it would be in the real world. And I can use the features of Morse Runner that more or uh, the features of M1 Mic Mic rather uh, allows me to use M1 Mic Mic to run the contest. And I can use the features of M1 Mic Mic that Morse Runner doesn't have, like for example, the identification of the country file. So when I enter in a call sign down at the bottom of the screen, it'll tell me what country I'm in. I'm working. Um, and I can use the super check partial and things like that. Um, so it's kind of very cool for practicing using M1 Mic Mic in the real world. I don't need to have this open while I'm operating. I can just set it aside. Um, I can open up any of the windows I want. Um, you know, I can use the band map, which of course is meaningless in this context. Um, I can open the log window, which I have. I have two screens here. I'm only showing you one. I'm using the other screen just for a scratch pad to keep things out of the way and allow me to have larger, um, a larger screen area available here. But the first step is to create a new log. And that log should be a CQ Worldwide WPX CW contest. The contest parameters, such as the categories and all that other stuff, are not really important at all. You don't even need to change them. All you need to do is to have w wpx cw because that's what morse runner simulates is a wpx contest worked all prefixes um, the second thing you need to do um, is to configure the ports in m1 mic mic um, and those ports um, are the com ports you want to make sure that you don't have anything connected to the com ports um, you can disconnect your uh, your USB cables and your COM cables. You don't necessarily have to disconnect them, but you have to configure Morse uh, M1 mic mic so that they're not configured M1 mic mic. And then you configure CW port on COM1, set your DTR to be CW. Um, from all these other choices, you just select CW, and you say OK. Then you say OK, and M1 mic mic is ready to go. The next step is to set up Morse Runner. Morse Runner has a lot of little knobs and bells and whistles that you can set. I'm going to run this demonstration at 20 words a minute. Um, I'm going to use a CW side tone of 500 hertz. Some people like a little higher. Um, I, I, I usually use a little higher in the real world, but for whatever reason, using speakers and not using headphones, 500 hertz seems to work a little better for me. Um, so that's a, a 550 rather. And that's what I'm going to use. I like to use a 200 hertz bandpass filter. Um, you can use anywhere from 100 to um, 600 hertz. I think you might even be able to go higher than that. But anyway, 100, uh, 200 is what I usually use, and it seems to work fairly well. Um, and then I can choose conditions, whether I want noise, if I want uh, you know, interference from other stations, uh, 
fade, flutter, and lids. Um, and the nice thing about this is you can turn the lids off. Wouldn't it be nice in the real world if we had a lid button that we could push? Um, of course, activity is just that. How many con uh, stations are calling you at a given time? I, I operate it at four right now. Um, you can start out as low as one, which will give you a very low activity. You can go as high as nine, which will give you an extremely high activity. I, mean, I think one and nine are unrealistic. I think you're probably going to want to be somewhere in between, maybe somewhere between two and seven, something like that. And again, I currently operate at four, which is what I'm going to do for this demonstration. You don't really have to worry too much about the other buttons in uh, Morse Runner because they're actually going to be, you're not going to be using any of this. You're not going to be using the scoring. You're not going to be using any of the Morse Runner interface other than this. Now, the run button here allows you to choose WPX competition, single calls, HST. You really only have two choices here. You either have pileup or you have WPX competition. The main difference between those two is with WPX competition, you you don't get to choose whether you have band conditions of various types. You're going to get noise, QRM, QSB, flutter, lids, all that stuff's going to be given to you. The only choice you get is activity. Um, so we're not going to use the WPX competition mode. We're going to use the pileup mode, and the pileup mode will allow us to turn all of these other items off to make it easier for the demo. In the real world, eventually you're going to want to turn all that stuff on because it makes the simulation more like the real world. Um, so after you have that all set up the way you want it, um, you can go back to Morse Runner and or go back to N1 Mike Mike, um, and you can start. You press the run button. You hear, in my case, you can hear the radio, the noise come up, and you call on CQ. Okay, we got him. It's going to send this call and a thank you. Call CQ again. So we got Denmark coming out. See down here, it's telling me. Oh, gotta wait. He wants my number again, so I'm gonna hit the exchange button. Give him the number again. If I need his number again, I can hit the question mark. Let's send this call again. And a thank you. Call CQ again. Now we get the pile up. Now, we can, speed the, we can speed the game up a little bit.
Now check partial. Oh, J.A. CQ again. And call CQ again. And I can't hear because of the speakers. But I think you get the point. We can turn this off. And now, of course, we can clear this out. Um, we, we can look at our log and go back. We can look at our rates. Uh, if we go to a window and we look at the info, it'll show us that our rate for the last 10 QSOs was 113 an hour. It gives you all the rates, all the graphics, everything you could want. You could look back and you can look at your skills going up. Now, of course, you know, more smart will do the same thing. It'll tell you your score and give you your rates and things like that. But it only gives you this scalar rate. It does not tell you what your rate over the last several, uh, you know, time period this last 10 QSOs we were doing a rate of 113 the last 100 of course we didn't do 100 QSOs but since um, since 7.30 or, t or 8.30 um, we did 6 since 9 o'clock we did 6 I have a goal set of 56 QSOs per hour so as long as I'm hitting my goal I'm above it um, and I, this graph will be above my goal line there so there's all kinds of you know and one Mike Mike is another subject altogether um, and so is Morse Runner, to a certain extent. Um, and we'll talk about um, M1 Mike Mike is probably a separate discussion altogether. This particular case, we're looking at Morse Runner. Morse Runner has a bunch of different um, modes that it can run, and pileup mode is, is the one that we generally run. Um, and if you wanted to run it without M1 Mike Mike, you could. Um, I'm going to do a different video for that because I have to reboot. I have to stop the the um, interface between the two of them. Um, to be able to use it individually. Um, so that's the connection between M1 Mike Mike and Morse Runner for automated contest simulation. And this is WK2T, and thanks for watching my video.